there's room for one more in that classroom. And then first, second grade has 17 right now. We do have some more spaces in second grade and some in first grade as well. Kindergarten, I think, is full at 14. Um, there's one potential that's considering, so kindergarten may be finished. Um, curriculum, we made some changes with our curriculum this year. Uh, so um, just some things we weren't happy with. Same philosophy, same style of teaching. Um, just made some different choices there. Um, cafeteria, as Pastor Doug said, we are opening up the kitchen. Nicole will be in charge of that. We'll be serving hot lunch twice a week, Mondays and Wednesdays, and we've decided to make that free to the children. So I'll be putting a clipboard on the back. Um, we made a menu of 10, 10 meals, and we're going to rotate through that every month. Fox's Pizza has also agreed to supply us with pizza once a month for the kiddos for lunch. Um, what I have on the list here is non-perishables, just to get the kitchen started. Nicole was a little nervous. She's like, I'm not sure what all we need, you know, uh, quantity-wise. So I just did the non-perishable list to get us started, and I appreciate whatever you can do to fill that list. I've also put some boxes in the entryway. Our weekly schedule changed. Um, we are no longer going to have school on Fridays. Kindergarten didn't do school on Fridays, but none of the school will be operating on Friday. So the children come to school Monday through Thursday, 8 to 3. Um, we'll be collaborating with more of our local businesses, getting out in the community, going to do things there, having them come in. An exciting thing that I'm excited about and uh, trying to get grant money or individual private donors, brain balance. This is a, a, a wellness program that is a franchise. It started in Long Island, their first center was down in Georgia. They are in Wexford, and they offer an alternative therapeutic program for children dealing with anxiety, hyperactivity, trauma, just, you know, functioning. And a lot of our children seem to be dealing with a lot more now. And so I am an anti-medication. It doesn't mean that it doesn't have a purpose. There are times when you need it, and we do have children that can use that. But Brain Balance is an alternative program to medication. And uh, they do a bunch of sensory, therapeutic exercises, plus they do a diet, nutrition. So they've offered me a huge discount to bring them into our school. And so looking at trying to get 10 children qualified for that program, but it is still very pricey. Um, so if you would like to donate towards that, I will talk to you about that later. Or if you have any other options or ideas for me, to get that money. Um, so how can you help? Not only with brain balance, but continue praying. Um, sponsorship, you can sponsor through tuition, brain balance, full or partial uh, field trip. Sometimes we get private donors that say, hey, I'd like to pray, pay for the primary kids to go to the planetarium, I'd like to pay for the bus, or I'd like to pay entrance fees, or I'd like to provide them lunch while they're out that day. So there's lots of different opportunities. Scholarship fund, we are trying to establish a scholarship fund where we can distribute, we do have money that comes in each year from some local corporations, um, but we always have more families in need. Um, technology donor matching. Um, I found a really good deal on Chromebooks, and Betty went after it. <laughs> and she got a donor, and by the time she called and told me that she had that donor, the price had tripled. And so we're looking at trying to match that donation to get Chromebooks for those upper grades, and then also get tablets for, we just want six of each, so the kids could show the Chromebooks, there would be individual for each kiddo in those third and fourth grade, but the tablets would be shared by everybody used at center time. So if you'd like to match that donation, you can talk to me, um, the, talk to you about the cafeteria. The next big thing for the school would be renovations on the third floor. The third floor is not completely rough. It is all framed out, there's beautiful hardwood floors, but we need to move some walls, change some walls, put in some plumbing, some ceilings, put in a staircase um, <laughs> to access it, it drop ceiling. So there's a whole other round of renovations that'll need to be done um, for fall of 2024. And so that can be their financial skill, muscle, um, or being an assistant. You may not know how to drywall, you may not know how to do that stuff, you can know how to push a broom, or to say what you need me to do you could be used. So um, that's where we are, and we're looking forward to this new year. And if you have any questions, you can see me after church. Okay, we got the raffle for this month, and I'm going to ask, where's Miss Daisy?
speaks to us and gives us direction and shows us the way. And so uh, we're going to keep that in our mind frame as we go about worshiping today. And just uh, just uh, before we start, we're just going to say a simple prayer. God, please show us the way you want us to go. Speak to us the direction you would have us to travel in and what you would have us to do. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to stand and join us for worship.
the world, the King of all kings, the first, the last, the everything. Lord, please accept our praise as we come to you seeking your word and your direction. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We've come to our time of praises this morning. I did have a praise that came in this morning. Um, my Aunt Pam called and just uh, said she wanted to thank and praise the church for all the cards that she's been getting and receiving there at the, uh, at the home. And she just wanted to say hello and say thank you and praise uh, the Lord uh, on uh, your behalf for everybody who's been, been sending their cards. Um, anybody else have a praise that they'd like to share? What's God been doing good? Yes, Denisha. Um, we got to on Saturday night, we had to have fun having John and Susan John and Ted, and then that fellowship that we were making over there, and it was just so nice to, like, stop and be in nature and just get a little deep breath and just enjoy the moment and not be in the closet and sit and not sit. Okay. this Wednesday, so uh, that's hard to believe, but uh, that means I've been here for 18, so uh, 20 years on Wednesday, uh, what, a, what, a, what a ride it's been, uh, 20 years in a row too, I didn't even, like, even take any on. <laughs>
Yes, Tracy. spoken request can just lift up a hand and we're going to let the Lord uh, see those and take care of those but let's, uh, let's just worship uh, this, this morning as we prepare for this time of prayer Thank you. 
Father God, we come to you and we just want to lift up our praise to you and our thanksgiving for the things that you have been doing and blessing us with. Lord, we think of uh, anniversaries and birthdays that we're celebrating this week. We're thankful for gathering together with our kids and our spouses and, and four generations of family, whether it be on vacation or the Clarence County Fair. Lord, we're just so grateful what you give to us. And Lord, we just want to uh, just uh, thank you for Pam. And uh, Lord, we're, she's so grateful for the cars that she's been receiving. And uh, we just want to thank you for the, the motorcycle accident that turned out okay uh, over by Janet's house. And, and Lord, uh, for uh, for uh, June being able to walk up and down the stairs, what a blessing that is. And, and for Tanisha and her mom to be able to just uh, find this uh, forgiveness uh, and breakthrough after years and years of praying about it, and, and Lord, for good neighbors and help us put back in our cows. Lord, what a what a, an awesome experience it is to, to have good and godly neighbors. And so we thank you, Lord. And, and Lord, we just want to lift up uh, uh, the Barbara Mogul family, Lord, as she passed away this week. And Lord, we just ask you to be with the the friends and family for this week as they're dealing with this loss. And, and Lord, we pray for Jerry as he's in the hospital this morning. And, and Lord, we're praying against this infection, Lord, that it would not spread and it could be controlled. And there would have to be uh, no more procedures or surgeries. But Lord, we pray against this infection in the name of Jesus that's going on with him. And, and whatever's going on with Bob uh, this morning and, and his sickness. And, and I know he's been having issues with his mouth. And Lord, we just ask that you would just... Uh, Reign over him with your healing touch, and Lord, you bring him back to full health. And and, and Lord, for this Dominic and Nick Naomi, whose mother passed away, and um, Lord, we just pray for for them that you strengthen them and be with the entire family, and, and bless them with your presence. And, and for Sterling, who is uh, sick, and June was not feeling well, and uh, and and Lord, for uh, Tracy with her trips to the eye doctor and this possible retina detachment. Lord, we lift up uh, this uh, condition, and Lord, we just ask you to, to help with it. And, and, and Lord, with uh, um, the kids, Tanisha and John's kids with the bug bites, Lord, help them to uh, be able to deal with that. And, and, and Lord, for um, just all the family stuff that's going on in Tanisha's family. And, uh, and Lord, for Randy, who's home and not feeling well today. And for uh, Beth Layton and her dad, who has... Uh, uh, ulcers, and Lord, we're asking, Lord, for a healing touch upon him, and, and, and for Brittany Parker, and Lord, we just pray for her, and, and Lord, we ask you to just bring her near to you, and to, to draw her to her family, and, and, and Lord, for Joy, Joy Shearer, who has cancer, and Lord, we pray for her and her family, Lord, and you just take this away with the word, word from your mouth, and, and Father God, for the, the rest of the time we have here today, Lord, would you be with us and strengthen us? by speaking to us from your word and with your Holy Spirit. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> All right, at this time, the children are dismissed for Children's Church. that I, I have uh, probably cannot live without is it's the backup camera. Anybody have a backup camera in their vehicle? Like, you know, you, you, you back up for so long using the mirrors that you almost forget how to back up when you don't have the use of, like, it's, it's like a big screen, too. So, like, it, when, when I get in the Kim's car, like, the, the screen's like this big. I'm like, I can't, I can't see what's back there. I can't make, but in the truck, it's big, and, and it's, an, it's, it's, it's like I can even see it without my glasses. Like it's it's a nice clear picture. Uh, you know how fast you know you, it, it has lines back there that as you turn the wheel it puts you in the place where you need to be. And so it's awesome. And in fact, this week I lost the use of my backup camera because I had put my bike tailgate pad over the bed of the truck and it covered over the camera. And so I'm sitting there in an unfamiliar driveway trying to back out and I was like, I can't see anything. 
It's like I almost forgot, you know, that you had mirrors, uh, you know, up until like uh, just a couple of years ago. You use them all the time when you back out, but it's like, I can't quite see. And so, you know what? I did what any person would do. I get out and I flipped up the flap on the tailgate pad so that I could see the use of backup camera again. You know, it, it, it was kind of paralyzing for a moment not to be able to have that feature, but it was so nice because it's a clear picture of where I'm going. And so many times when things get fuzzy in our path and things get fuzzy in our life and and it's not quite clear, we become paralyzed and not able to move. And and, and we're afraid to move and we're unsure what path to take and and, and we don't know where we're quite going and so we we just stop going anywhere until we, we have a clear picture. But thankfully, we have a God who speaks to us through His Word and through His presence and through His Holy Spirit, and, and I want to take—I want you to take a listen to the words that God speaks to His chosen people, Israel. And if you have your Bible, you can turn with me. We're not going to be there long, but we can turn there to Isaiah chapter thirty, uh, verses eighteen through twenty-one. This is a, a promise that God gives to His chosen people. Isaiah chapter thirty, verses eighteen through twenty-one. And this is what it says. It says, The Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion, for the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. People of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. How gracious he will be when you cry for help. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction... Your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes you will see them. Whether you turn to the right or turn to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. I'm so thankful that the Lord doesn't just offer clear direction and clear guidance as a one-time thing to those who are in, in Zion and in Israel. Because... We find examples all through the scriptures of God speaking into the lives of people and speaking into the hearts of people and giving them direction and showing them the way. And so that's what I want to take a look at here this morning about how God speaks into our lives to show us the way that we should go and to show us the direction for our lives. But I just want to start with a a word of prayer. I'm going to ask Scott, would you open with, with a word of prayer this morning? Lord, just give thanks today. Lord, we give thanks that we can open your word and God can speak together with uh, your word for today and teach us. In your name, amen. Amen. So the first thing that, that I, I see in the scriptures, and, and, and we're going to use David as our example, uh, but God speaks and shows us the way through his written word. God speaks and shows us the way through his written word. You know, many of, of the Psalms, we have that, that big book in the middle of our Bible when we open about halfway up, there's that, that big book, and it's the book of Psalms, and it has 150 chapters or 150 individual Psalms inside of that book. And David is the known author of 73 of those Psalms. Uh, in fact, he's probably the author of, of there's, there's a few of them that are just unknown or that he's, he's believed to be the author of it. But at the very least, we know that David wrote about half of the Psalms that are in that book. And so we, we, we often uh, look at these and read these Psalms and we, we see a relationship between David and God where, where God is given, giving David direction. And and he's given him guidance, and he's given him a path to walk down. So I have just a a, a sampling of a a couple of psalms that were written by David, or and there's there's one that's that's most likely written by David. Uh, But the first is Psalm 23. Psalm 23, verses one through four, and I I know I learned the King James, so this is a little new for me in the NIV. But but this is what it says in the NIV. It says, "The Lord is my shepherd." I lack nothing. Shepherd meaning he, he is the, the one who guides me and, 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 and leads me down the path. So the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me do it. He makes me through my actions. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. David also wrote in Psalm 32, 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. That's the words directly from God given down to David. In Psalm 37, 23 through 24, The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. And then two in Psalm 119, and this is the one where they're not quite sure, but there's, there's a possibility that, that it was written by David. It says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. And then just a few verses later in 133, it says this. It says, direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin roll over me. So... God and David, they had many long discussions, encounters, and interaction when it came to the the fact that God was giving direction uh, into his life. In in fact, David said things like, uh, shepherd me, Lord, be be my shepherd. He said things like, make me lie down, Lord, or lead me beside the still waters, or or guide me in the right paths, and, and, and And God told him, he says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. And I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. And I will make your steps firm. And we also have this this verse in, in Psalm 119 that says, where David writes, Your word is a light and a lamp to me. Your word, the word words in the scripture... It's a light for my path. And so these are wonderful truths that we need to realize. God does all of this and more for us when we look to Him and listen because He intimately cares about the direction of your life. And He wants you to follow the direction that He's laid out in the world. You know, I, I've said this time and again, but it, 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 it bears repeating that the, the way that God speaks the most often to you is through the Scriptures. It's not through an audible voice. It's not through a leading or a guiding in this direction. God speaks the most clearly and the most directly to you from His Holy Word. That's that's how it was meant to be. We're told that that it's a living and active document. It's a living and active words that are in there. And so, as David spent time in God's Word, he found direction. He found guidance. He found the way that he should go more times than not. You know, David knew that there is no wasted time in the Word of God. There's no wasted time in the Word of God. And it wasn't a chore, it wasn't a habit or a tradition, but God's Word was a lamp unto his feet and a light unto his path that caused him to walk and not stumble. I I was just thinking about this this morning. You you realize that David really only had access to Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, right? Like, that was the extent of God's Word. And he was like, this stuff is so good. And it, it shows me the way that I need to go. And now we have all of this extra content, and we look back at some of those books and we're like, oh God, why'd you put that in there? You know, right? When you get to Leviticus every year on your reading through the Bible in a year, and you're like, that's enough of that for a while, right? But God, but, but David thought, man, this stuff, this stuff just in these five books is so good, and it lights my path. There was no wasted time in the Word. And so each morning, each day, and we get up and we, we say this prayer. God, speak 
to me through your word today. And he will. God, speak to me through your word today. Light my path as I read today. And then we promise that God will begin to show us the way uh, through our problems and through all the things that are going on in our lives. Make sure you use God's word like David used it. And allow it to speak to you and show you the way. So God speaks and shows us the way through his word. <clears throat> the second thing that I see through <clears throat> from scripture is that God speaks and shows the way through people, through other people who are following God. God speaks and shows the way through other people who are following God. You see, David wasn't the only major player in the Bible who heard God's voice and used it to guide their way. As the New Testament gets underway, we have this, this kind of crazy character uh, called John the Baptist who heard the voice of God speaking to him on a regular basis. And, and, and he was quite the interesting character. But all of the days of his life had been laid out for him even before his, from before his birth. So let's just take a scriptural journey through uh, through looking at John the Baptist. So the first verse that we that we find in the Bible that talks about John the Baptist is Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 4. And why is that significant? Because Isaiah was around a couple hundred years before John the Baptist came on the scene. And so God was telling us that this was going to happen through John the Baptist in Isaiah 40. And this is the, the word of the Lord. It says, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her heart service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. As a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, and the rugged places a plain. You see, this was a prophecy talking about something that was going to happen in the future, uh, about where Israel would have their sin atoned for. But before that would happen, there would be a voice calling out from the wilderness, telling people to prepare the way of the Lord. And then in Luke chapter 1, verses 11 through 17, still before John the Baptist is even born, we have John the Baptist being foretold uh, to his parents. It says, Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom and of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So this is an angel coming directly from God, giving them a message, the parents of John the Baptist saying, this is who your son will be, and this is the job before him, or laying out and ordaining the steps of him even before he was born. And then we have his birth. Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, going back to Isaiah 40. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. And John wrote, wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. And he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one who more powerful than I. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. 
And finally, in the book of John, it tells us this in John chapter 1, verses 6 through 8 about John the Baptist. It says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. You see, John the Baptist, his whole time here on earth, his whole purpose was to show and tell people the way that they should go. And God is still doing that with people. And and that's why we need other people through the church and in our lives, because God is sending people through the church and through through relationships that will be able to help and put us on the right path. You know, we're so quick to go to people who are who we work with, and we're so quick to go to people on social media as if they're experts in something, and we're so quick to, to, to go to anyone else for help. Back in, I remember listening on the radio, they used to have a, a segment every day called Dear Abby, and you'd wrote in about all your problems that you're having. Do you remember that? What, what should I do about this? Well, we do need other people, but we have to be careful who we are asking for direction and purpose because it has to be one who was sent by God and who has the calling to guide people through this life. God will use other pe- other believers to deliver the messages we need and to give us direction. That's the whole purpose for John the Baptist entering the world. And he was a, to be a guide and voice pointing people in the right direction. So who is your John the Baptist? Who do you have in the church and in your in your life who, who you know that you know that you know is hearing from God and pointing you in the direction that you need to turn? You need someone like that to give you direction. Even though they might come in a weird kind of package, John the Baptist was not your, your ordinary kind of dude. Like he was he was wearing camel hair and he was eating bugs out in the desert. It, it, There was something wrong with it, but he was anointed by the Lord. It said even before he was born, he had the Holy Spirit in him. That's pretty impressive, right? That that even before he was born, he had the presence of the Holy Spirit in him. You need someone like that in your life. And you know something else? I'm going to give you this for free. Something else. When it comes to trusting this voice, the voice of God and the voice of other people will always point to Jesus above themselves. If, 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 if what they are telling you is the truth, it will always point to Jesus and not to something that they can do in their own natural abilities or that you can do in your natural abilities. Because everything John the Baptist did pointed people to Jesus and not to himself. He said, I'm not the light. Jesus is the light. He's the one. And so if the advice you're getting from someone points to Jesus and everything that they say, you can trust it. It's from God. And also, if it makes you uncomfortable, it's probably from God too. Right? Everything John the Baptist did pointed to Jesus. And all the things that we do that are in God's plan for our lives will point to Jesus as well. So there will always be less of you and more of him if it's the voice of God speaking to you. And finally, we have Jesus speaking and showing the way through the promised Holy Spirit to his disciples. <clears throat> you know, just this last week I was visiting someone in a healthcare facility and, and I, hadn't, I hadn't been there in a while and and they had kind of changed things up in, in, in the, the lobby since the last time I was there. But I went over and, and I asked the, the lady working there, he said, I need the room for, for such and such. And, and, and so we got into a long discussion. And, and so finally she got around to giving me the room um, and, and the directions to get there. But, well, something got lost in translation. And I'll be honest, I probably stopped listening. Yeah, because there was a squirrel over there, or there was something. It it was Christmas in July, and there was lots of things to look at, okay? So, like, my ADD was like, but, I was like, I know I'm taking the elevator to the second floor, and we'll just just wing it from there. And so I went up the elevator, and and the door opened, I thought, oh, 
she said left at the elevator, right? So I went left and I went back and I, and all of a sudden I am in a place in the facility that's locked down. Like I went through the door, I'm like, this isn't right. And the door shut behind me and now I can't get out. I'm trapped in there. I'm like, I'm like, ah, this is not where I need to be. But thankfully I knew a person that worked in that part of the facility. She's like, you're lost, aren't you? And I was like, yes, I am, Vicky. Can you take me? I said, I'm looking for, I'm looking for this room. And she goes, oh, you're not even close, really, are you? So she she opened she unlocked the door and, and led me down the hall and, and got me to where I needed to go and I began thinking, you know, wouldn't it be awesome if we had a personalized GPS system that would just take us around everywhere all the time? And I began to think, don't we, we have that that way? It's it's called Google Maps or Waze. And even when I'm on my bike, I have a Trail Link app that that let. And sometimes I get lost still, but but it, it, it kind of tells us where we need to go at all times. And I said, especially in our spiritual lives, man, if we could just have something that was leading and guiding us at all times and telling us, go this way, don't go this way, go through this door, don't go through this door. And then I thought, my goodness, that's the Holy Spirit in, in, in a nutshell. That's, that's who He is. And that's what He does. And that's why as Jesus is getting ready to leave His disciples... He gives them these promises. In John 14, verses 15 through 19, He tells them, If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. This Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept Him because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you know Him, for He lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you before long. The world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. And just in case they didn't get the idea from that, uh, uh, just two chapters later in John 16, verses 12 through 13, he says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you of what is to come. And if he already knows what is coming, then he knows how to guide us and lead us away from pitfalls and from false steps and and, and from doing things and going places where we don't want to be. But Jesus tells his disciples these promises. He said, I'm sending an advocate, a guide, a helper, because you need it, right? You you need it to get through this life, because if not, you'll be paralyzed and, and not know which way to go. And this same Holy Spirit, we're told, was present in the life of David and in the life of John the Baptist, and this Holy Spirit will show us the way in all things. So these same disciples, who Jesus is giving these instructions to before he leaves this earth, this earth are, are, are probably a little scared, a little uncertain. Their teacher is leaving the world for a while. And we know that they all deserted him. We know Peter the Rock denied him three times when questioned by a young girl. And, and after his death, he finds many of them just back fishing again. But after the promised Holy Spirit comes on them, They become completely different people with a new purpose and a new direction. From the book of Acts, chapter 2 and chapter 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly it sounded like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So Peter, who was, was, wasn't was able to muster up the, the, the word yes, just that yes, I do know him, just a few, is now given the ability to speak a, a number of languages. Acts 2, 38 through 41, continuing on, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and your children and all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. 
With many other words he warned them and he pleaded with them, Save yourself from this corrupt generation. And those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. In Acts 4.31, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. So the Holy Spirit comes on the once clueless, the once helpless disciples and gives them an absolute purpose and direction for their days. Uh, No longer were they wondering about their future and what they would do. In fact, they went around telling others what direction they needed to go in. The Holy Spirit within them caused them to know what direction to go and where they needed to turn. And the Holy Spirit changes everything. That's my big secret for you today. The Holy Spirit changes everything. If you're paralyzed by fear and you don't know which way to go, the Holy Spirit changes everything and destroys fear. Because we're told in, in first in Second Timothy that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of, of love and power and of, of self-discipline. We're told that if, if we repent and we're baptized, that we'll receive two things. Forgiveness for our sins and the filling of the Holy Spirit. It's like God is downloading in each of us a spiritual GPS that stays and leads and guides at all times. And it's not just a one-time thing, because we saw the disciples, they needed filled with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, and then they needed filled with the Holy Spirit again by Acts chapter 4, because what? The world takes it out of us. The world happens, and we need filled again and again and again with God's voice, the Holy Spirit. So if you're looking to be guided by the voice of God, you can look for it in three places. The voice of God is in the Word of God. So open it up and ask Him to speak to you and teach and lead you. The voice of God is found in the people of God. Find someone that you know you can trust who will pray for you and honestly share with you what the Lord has laid on them for you to follow. And God speaks through the Holy Spirit. He wants to fill every part of you and lead you where you need to go. So do you need to be shown the way? Begin to look in those places. Would you pray with me? God, our prayer is that you would speak to us to show us the way. And many of us just want to want you to, to, to shout out to us in, in a loud voice and to just let us know which way we could go. But Lord, that's not how, how you work very, the most the many times, Lord. You work through those who are in your world, those who are around your people, and those that, that have the Holy Spirit in them. So, Lord, my prayer is that you would speak to us in one of those ways as we seek direction and guidance and purpose. And, Lord, show us the way that we should go. Without a doubt, without a worry, without a fear. Show us the way we should go. Help us to walk in it. And, Lord, for anyone who just needs a fresh infilling here today, or maybe a, 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 a new infilling that they've never, they've never had before and never had the Holy Spirit be a part of their lives. Lord, I pray that today would be a new day for them. Lord, and you would fill them up with your Holy Spirit. Lord God, would you lead us and guide us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> We're going to stand and close in a psalm. And uh, if there's anybody that just would like to be prayed over, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, or or prayed over by a a person in the church here to to help you find direction, whatever it may be, if you would like to do that, you can come as we we close with the song.